Now for our mid-year updates, and we have finally come to the PC Master Race, who are once again, as expected, giving us a diverse collection of games to choose from, indies and otherwise. What's up guys, I'm 30 from What To Play, and these are the top 10 PC games of 2018 so far, ranked by PlayScore. The PlayScore averages gamer ratings and critic reviews. Opening at number 10 is Frostpunk. Rising to fame for their stylish portrayal of the tragedies of war, 11-Bit Studios moves from household scarcity management to a full-blown city. The first of its kind, Frostpunk challenges you to weigh consequence against consequence in this survival society game. You play as a ruler to a frozen Earth's last cities, managing both citizens and infrastructures. It's a grueling fight against extinction that leaves plenty of room for moral dilemmas. Develop new technologies, take care of factions, or explore the world outside the comforts of your warm city. A macro-level micromanagement game, it has a play score of 8.42. And for fantastic number 9, we have the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit. After Deck 9's Chloe-centric spin-off, this marks the second feature after Max's heart-ending Adventures in Don't Nod's Life is Strange series. While the first game brought us squarely back to our teenage years, their latest free-to-play episode offers a new perspective. Play as a 9-year-old named Chris who deals with his mother's recent death, using the power of his imagination. What follows is a series of events that, while filled with charm and childish wonder, are equally moving and mature. It's that balance of beauty, magic, and emotion that we've come to expect from this indie studio. A decidedly short episode though, but we hope to see more of Chris with the release of their upcoming Life is Strange sequel. The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit has a play score of 8.46. We're going retro with number 8, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Well, if there's one thing Inti Creates did right, it's the convincing 8-bit visuals of their retro-inspired platformer that looks straight of an NES system. Heck, they even got the Japanese anime-style marketing down to a science. But fortunately for them, that's not the only good thing about this love letter to Castlevania. Earning a whopping 10 out of 10 rating on Steam, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon has also garnered praise for its branching storylines, solid platforming, and endless replayability. Take on the shoes of a demon slayer named Zangetsu and help him to get his revenge among the game's dark castles. It's a perfect nostalgia trip for fans of Castlevania and old-time platformers. It has a play score of 8.47. On a lonely trip on number 7 is Far Lone Sales. With development being as far back as 2015, it's nice to see that Okomotive's quaint indie title has finally dug out of development hell, making use of the all-too-common survival game tropes set in a post-apocalyptic environment. Far Lone Sail stands out through its effective use of sound and imagery to create the ideal atmosphere for isolation. Steer your vehicle past the endless doom and gloom of their deserted world and manage your resources to survive the long journey ahead of you. Master the elements and rediscover the beauty of the absent civilization. Wrapped in a fittingly ominous soundtrack, it has a play score of 8.48. Number 6 is Iconoclasts. Uncover the secrets of a dying planet and join the renegade mechanic Robin in this interesting Metroidvania game from Joaquin Sandberg. Solve intricate puzzles and explore a big world filled with menacing boss battles and interesting characters. The game contains hours and hours of nut-twisting action with platforming mechanics. Use her wrench to interact with basically anything in its world and put everything back together. Underneath its metallic world lies a heart-wrenching epic. It has a play score of 8.49. Before we continue, there are about 103 games competing for this top 10 list. If you want to see the complete list, you could go to whattoplay.com, link in the description box below. Now for a good scare in the forest at number 5. Man, the heat is on for survival games this year, huh? One of the latest crazes to hit Twitch and YouTube streaming communities, Ed Knight's game's open-world survival game lets you channel your inner Eagle Scout as it pits you against man and its nature. Landing in an island filled with cannibalistic mutants after a plane crash, you'll have to use your crafting skills to get through each day. With danger lurking in every corner, the forest delivers both horror and accurate survival simulations. Chop down trees, create your makeshift home, 
explore the wilderness, and watch out for those headhunters. With their multiplayer options, you can even bring a friend along for the ride and make those cannibals pay. It has a play score of 8.61. Rolling it at number 4 is Just Shapes and Beats, a game that so blatantly defies its own name. Just Shape and Beats goes all in with the musical geometry to create one frenzied heap of a rhythm game, ignoring their own reductive implications. This co-op musical offers just the right amount of organized chaos to make it a satisfying bullet hell experience. Synchronize yourself to the beats and with each other as you conquer each of their different game modes. Learn the ropes in story mode, practice your skills in casual, and show them all off in the challenge runs. It's a perfect fit for your next in-house rave part. It receives a play score of 8.66. Number 3 is Into the Breach. A follow-up to the successful Faster Than Light game, Subset Game exercises their roguelike skills with this impeccable turn-based strategy. Simple as it may seem with its pixel art style, it seems to have won over the usually cold hearts of PC strategists. Now touted as one of the benchmarks for strategy video games, Into the Breach brings you to a not-so-near future of endless warfare and colossal mechs. Perfect your strategies and their thrilling turn-based combat system, and defend your city from the Vec artillery. With new challenges coming with each randomly generated playthrough, there's a lot of surprises to help you sharpen your tactical skills. It has a play score of 8.83. Diving at number 2 is Subnautica. Despite humanity's thousand-year presence, we've still yet to discover the mysteries of our ocean's deep abyss. And that's exactly the kind of unknown world you'll discover in this nautical open-world survival game. Take a dip into the majestic underseas and free dive your way through kelp forests, underwater rivers, and so much more. With thousands of creatures roaming about the increasingly dark caverns, you'll have to be at your most alert to survive the aquatic wildlife. Build and manage your own sea habitat, collect food and resources, and discover the mysteries of watery void. It has a play score of 8.93. Here are the runners-up before we reveal the number one. Number 11 is Minute, an indie adventure from Devolver Digital. Take on the Zelda-like world one minute at a time and lift the curse once and for all. As charming as you'd expect from DD release, it has a play score of 8.42. Number 12 is the Red Strings Club. Another one from the acclaimed indie studio, this time it's a narrative adventure in a cyberpunk future. Fight against corporations with your mixing, hack voices, and find the formula for happiness. It has a play score of 8.40. 13 is Overload. Dive into what passes as a modern VR revival of the 90s FPS Descent, capturing the high-octane shooting environment in the realm of virtual reality. It has a play score of 8.40. 14 is Horizon Chase Turbo, another arcade racing game inspired by the simplistic 90s. Drift your way through a myriad of racetracks and outrun your opponents with your mad driving skills. Call your friend and enjoy its split-screen support. It has a play score of 8.37. Number 15 is Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. A sequel to Level 5's Ghibli role-playing game, play the role of King Evan and embark on a life-changing journey towards true leadership and the self. Set in a gorgeously detailed world, it has a play score of 8.37. 16 is Guns, Gore, and Cannoli 2. Become a true gangster in this run-and-gun platformer reboot and take on the entire world with your trusty gun. Delivering on the promises of their name, it's one crazy side-scroller with a play score of 8.36. 17 is Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Become the Watcher once more and take your role-playing adventures to a brand new region. Overcome a new set of challenges and dangers in a bid to confront the God of Light. It has a play score of 8.35. 18 is Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. Marking the much-awaited revival of the international job system, this new take on the 2006 FF chapter is a welcome treat. Recreate your journeys in the land of Ivalis with a whole new set of skills and abilities. It has a play score of 8.33. 19 is Yoku's Island Express, an indie adventure with a mix of pinball mechanics. 
This open world game lets you explore Mukumana Island and unlock its secrets by helping friends and awakening deities. It has a play score of 8.32. Number 20 is Ghost of a Tale. Navigate the dangers of dwindling heights in this indie action RPG seen through the eyes of a brave little mouse. Succeeding in what wondrous storybook atmosphere, it has a play score of 8.31. And the best PC game of 2018 so far is Celeste. Yes, 2018's best game so far is a platformer, and if you know anything about this game, you'll know why. From Towerfall Ascension's Matt Thorson and Skytorn's Noel Berry, the two devs team up to create a platforming masterpiece that combines smooth controls, challenging levels, and captivating narratives. Dive into their 8-bit world and take on the shoes of Madeline as she embarks on a soul-searching expedition on Mount Celeste. But endearing as it looks with its cutesy pixel visuals and avoiding that cliched hack and slash illusion, the game definitely packs a mean punch in terms of platforming difficulty. It's worth every penny and hair pulling moment. It's 2018's best game so far with a play score of 9.13. What do you think about our list? Do you have any questions, negative reviews, feedbacks? You could comment below and we'll talk about it. If you want to get these games right now or visit whattoplay.com, the links are in the description box below. To get all what to play updates, subscribe now and don't forget to click that bell button. And I guess that's it for today guys. I'll see you around. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm what I I'm what to play <laughs> Again, again.